Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. I'm back today with one of the most fun cards that I've made in a long time. It's a double bridge and it has this adorable octopus swinging from a pendulum. She's one of the Rabbit Hole Design's new caffeinated critters. They just launched this weekend and they are fun. So I have to give credit to my husband for this. I was just gonna mount her on my card with foam tape and he walked in when I was still working on the concept and he said oh, it'd be really cool if she was like riding the waves. So bing, light bulb moment, right? I decided on a pendulum card and that way she'd uh, be able to ride those waves. So I'm just gonna move quickly through some of this stuff. Uh, to form the card, I've got three strips of cardstock. Each one's a slightly different shade, the darker uh, shades toward the back and then I've got a medium and a light in the front. And each strip is just like one inch shorter than the one before it. Um, I'll have the all the dimensions on the blog for uh, length and width and then where I scored them. Basically I'm just offsetting these folds to create the bridge. And I'll make sure that they all lie flat. And I decided that I wanted waves at the top rather than just straight across. So I've got some of my stitched hillside borders and I'll play with them and kind of, you know, go back and forth which way do I like it and form some like gentle waves here. And then I'll run it through the big shot. I ended up just using that same die there again, but I switch it up on the other two a little bit here. And so once I get this guy cut out, I'm just going to repeat the process on the other two. And then make sure that they all line up nicely. And then I'll start my stamping. Uh, I wanted to stamp that sentiment onto a a banner but it's a wavy banner and in order to get the curve just right I die cut the banner first and then I inlaid it back into the paper so that I can keep lining it up just in case I you know move the stamp or move the paper when I'm stamping it and need to reposition it uh, it's just a, an easy way to make sure you'll be able to line it back up again and I'm gonna stamp in memento tuxedo black ink and then off camera, I go ahead and I come back in and emboss the uh, sentiment with just clear embossing powder. And I decided coffee bubbles would be fun. So there's this molecule stamp that's really cute and I'm going to cut him out uh, with a circle die. But first I'm gonna stamp him again in Memento Tuxedo Black. And then I'll emboss him as well. So I've got Versamark after the black ink and then some clear embossing powder and I'll melt it with the heat tool and then while I've got everything out for stamping I'm going to stamp my envelope remember no naked envelopes you just want to hint at what's inside And then now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out that coffee bubble. So I'll line it up and run it through the big shot. And I've already die cut some other bubbles, different sizes. And I've also die cut um, some different pieces of coral that I had in my stock and my stash, different dies. Anything that looked underwater, I die cut it from a, a several different shades of cardstock. And I'm going to add some shading and I did that to the bubbles and then I also did it to the the um, other dies and then I'm going to speed through coloring here there's about a minute and a half if you want to fast forward um, but I don't have any you know real secrets to coloring here I kind of start with my darker colors where I think there'd be shading and then I come in with my mid and my light tones I thought she'd be fun in, in purple and those pink rollers. <laughs> you gotta remember those pink rollers, right? And I love her eyes. 
<laughs> she looks like I feel right now. <laughs> And you'll notice there's kind of a big gap between the light and the mid-tone there. So I'll come in, I'll do a little bit of uh, tip to tip or stippling just to try to bridge that gap a bit. And then I'm gonna fill in the mugs in the coffee. And since she's gonna be floating in like a teal colored water, I made the coffee pot I want it to basically look clear, so it's it's shades of teal. And I thought the uh, the coffee mugs would be fun in bright colors. And these mugs are super cute. You can, if you want, you can personalize them. Right, number one mom or whatever you'd like in there. It'd be cute. And then after I get them all colored, I'm gonna cut them out with my scan and cut. Well, it with my scan and cut. And I left a white border so she wouldn't lose any of her hair, but I, I didn't want that white border to be visible. So I'm gonna find a BG marker that's the right shade. And I'll come in and just kind of cover that up. But then I also decided I wanted some shading where she'd be like, you know, shadows underneath her and in the gaps behind her. So I'm going to come back in in a second here with a darker BG marker and then kind of fill in some of that negative space and, and the bottom there. Just add a little bit of shadows and give her a little more dimension. And so now we're going to form the pendulum. And I, I've slowed this down a bit for you because it's not hard, but I don't want you to miss anything. I've got one of these little sliders. It's the round slider um, that you would use for, for uh, sliding cards. And I've got a penny and two pieces of blue paper. And honestly, those little blue circles aren't really necessary. It's just it makes it a little cleaner. Um, not that you'll even see it but um, I glued one penny to the first circle. Well, I'm only gonna use one penny. Glued the penny to the first circle, and I really need to refill this ink, or this uh, glue pen here. <laughs> and then I've got a little strip of paper that's gonna go on top of the penny, and then that other blue circle on top of that. And now you've basically got a pendulum like, you know, on a grandfather clock. And I'm just testing the depth there. It is not going to go on the front. And since I'm using tacky glue, it takes a little longer to dry. So I'm going to put a block on it and set it aside. And then I'm going to figure out where I want the hole in that wave. And I'll just use a, a quarter inch hole punch. And... It fits perfectly inside here. And I'll put a link to those. Um, these are black, but mostly I see them available in white. My husband 3D prints extras for me sometimes. Um, but they're the same size as the one that you can buy from My Favorite Things. So I'm going to add glue to the little slider. And I'm going to put it in the hole just so I can figure out placement here. And then I'll glue her on. And I'm making sure that I'm not gluing to the wave. I'll take the wave off, actually. And then I'm going to set her aside to dry. And when they're both dry, now I can attach them. And I've got a little washer here. If you don't have a metal washer that's the right size, you can just use some paper and stack them up and... Uh, what you really want is just to create a little bit of a gap between the octopus and the wave. And then the penny on the back is thick enough to not need a washer on the back, but you can. And I'm sorry, it's hard to show you from, I have an overhead camera, so um, it's hard to show you up above that it's working, but it is working. <laughs> I'll show you again in a, from a different angle shortly. So now I'm going to add a double layer of foam tape. And I want to make sure that I'm not getting into any area where that penny's swinging. 
and the double layer of foam tape is going to give me enough of a gap between the, the first wave and the second wave. And you'll see I'm coming in here and I'm making sure that I don't cross the line of the, the first fold on that middle wave. If you go any further than that with the foam tape, then you're, you, that fold won't fold anymore. So you want to make sure that you don't go any further than that. And I'm not going to go crazy with the foam. That's, that's all I'm putting right on this side for, for this layer. And I'll line them up and stick them down. And then once I know that works, I'm going to go ahead and add a single layer of foam between the middle wave and the back wave. And watch my mistake here. You see how I said don't go past the fold? I did. <laughs> so I'm going to peel it up and cut it back. That's no big deal. And so then I can just go ahead and stick this side down. I'm just testing it and making sure everything's lining up. And now for the back side, I didn't want it to be flat. I could have just glued those layers flat, but I, I didn't want it. So I just put a single layer on both sides and it's not going to affect the way it folds up. Still works perfect. And I'll peel the release paper and make sure everything is perfectly aligned. And then now we can start decorating her. So I had die cut all of those pieces of coral and seaweed off camera and then I shaded them with just a, a little quick and dirty shading with a slightly darker color uh, marker just down the middle and it really makes a, a nice effect with almost no effort and once I lay them out I'm just gonna glue them down and almost everything is glued flat I think I use like a piece of foam tape for maybe one of the starfish and that big caffeine bubble but everything else is flat and especially near the octopus I'm not gonna raise anything up there that would end up you know causing her to not move easily and I noticed there's a little piece of seaweed here that sticks up just a smidge and it was catching that coffee cup so I'll go ahead and trim that away and now she's moving perfect and any pieces that are hanging off the edge I'll trim away And then coffee bubbles. So I was a little like worried that that because they're brown that they wouldn't necessarily look like bubbles and maybe they would not be <laughs> not necessarily received as bubbles, but I, I like them. And now you see this one bubble here. He's he I put him from the back so that you see him when the card is closed, but when you open it up, it's sort of hidden and the water should be see through, at least somewhat. Um, so this bubble is forward and I wanted it to be see-through so I put a or I wanted the water to appear see-through So I I put a double layer bubble there and then home stretch here. We're just adding some uh, shimmer pen to the octopus and I put it in her hair and Then I've got this new gel pen um, I'll put a link to this too. I it's it's not a gel pen. I'm sorry I think it's called a Pika pen and I, I don't have it in front of me. My friend Nicole turned me on to it and I love it Thank you, Nicole it's it's awesome and then I cannot seem to make a card lately without a little bit of glossy accents so I'm putting some of that on the coffee pot and then she's done so what do you think isn't she cute I love the way she turned out it's a lot of fun and this caffeinated octopus set is so cute it's brand new like I said from the rabbitholedesigns.com they're actually just launching this weekend and we're celebrating with a blog hop and if you go to their website you'll be able to find links to a lot of other um, fun projects and uh, prize packages so make sure you get in on that and if you like today's card go ahead and click the subscribe um, 
and click the bell so that you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching.